Hurricane Elsa is offshore Tampa Bay, Florida, moving towards the north. I'm Mike Naso with the latest on this hurricane. Of course, hurricane warnings are out along the Florida coastline, and that is the reason Hurricane Elsa became a hurricane again tonight after several days as a tropical storm. And uh, you can see that it is very ragged looking. Don't think it's a well-organized hurricane by any stretch of the imagination. But the center appears to be right in there where I circled in the general vicinity just offshore Sarasota and Tampa Bay, Florida, headed for the north. And it will make landfall somewhere on the west coast of Florida or in the Big Bend area over the next couple of hours. Let's get the latest on this hurricane now. This is as of 11 p.m. Eastern Time. Hurricane Elsa was at 27.3 north, 83.2 west. Winds were 75 miles per hour, moving north at 14, and that motion should bring it inland in a couple of hours. And it could be either a strong tropical storm or a hurricane at landfall, we're not sure. But we do have a hurricane warning from Egmont Key to the Steinhatchee River in Florida with the expectation of hurricane force winds. I'll show you those in a minute. They're just offshore, but you are getting tropical storm force along the coast. Sarasota just had a gust of uh, 46 miles per hour and a lot of heavy rain and the threat of severe weather as well. We do have a storm surge warning in effect for the west coast of Florida from Bonita Beach to the Ocachilla River, including Tampa Bay, because we'll have that water rise, especially on the uh, right-hand side of the hurricane. Tropical storm warnings out as well, all the way down the Florida west coast and all the way up to areas of the Big Bend. Tropical storm warnings also in effect from the mouth of St. Mary's River, Georgia, to Little River Inlet, South Carolina. And then we have a tropical storm watch north of Little River Inlet, South Carolina, to Duck in North Carolina. And that includes Pamlico and Albemarle Sounds, because it looks like Hurricane Elsa will still be a tropical storm through Thursday into Friday as it moves over areas of the Carolinas, Virginia, and then off the eastern seaboard. Again, if you live up there in Connecticut, Massachusetts, even up into Maine and the Canadian Maritimes, keep an eye on Elsa down the road. But right now the focus is, of course, the hurricane impact on the west coast of Florida. There's the wind field. You can see from when it was a hurricane back in the Caribbean, and now some more hurricane winds just offshore there, but they're making it closer and closer. Now, it's a Category 1 hurricane that's capable of some damage. Uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between a tropical storm and a low-end Category 1. So if it makes landfall with 65 mile per hour winds versus 75, that's not a huge difference in the impact. Nevertheless, it'll still go down as a hurricane or not. So that's what we're watching for. Certainly not anything like... Uh, the west coast of Florida saw with hurricanes Charlie or Michael, which were up in the Category 4 and 5 range over the last 15 uh, to 20 years. Here's the radar out of Tampa, and you can see at the beginning of this loop, if I go back to the beginning, look at that eye. It had that donut eye with the eye wall. That's when it was upgraded to a hurricane. And then look what happens to it just over the last few hours. That beautiful little eye it had just disintegrates into some kind of something. And so it is not well organized at all. However, those waters off the west coast of Florida are warm. It's summertime Gulf of Mexico waters, so it is possible that it'll wrap up again. But you can see most of the bad weather spreading on shore now. Areas here, this is Tampa, St. Pete up here. You got Sarasota and Venice uh, areas there of uh, Charlotte Harbor. This is uh, the Punta Gorda area. You guys are getting hit pretty good right now with some heavy convection there on the radar, no doubt. Rainfall. 4, 6, 10 inches, especially in that area I just showed you between uh, Charlotte Harbor and Tampa Bay. You guys are going to get drenched, and all this rain is going to pull on up all the way to Augusta, Raleigh, Durham, Richmond. You guys are even going to get a couple of inches of rain, and that could cause flooding. And you can see we now have a much more higher risk of flooding in areas here of western Florida and in areas from Jacksonville to Charleston. You guys could have some good flooding as well. So you want to watch out, especially in low-lying areas or by rivers. There's also that threat of severe weather. People got to remember, anytime there's a tropical system, you could have tornadoes. We have a tornado watch all night long. Uh, you could easily have tornadoes and or water spouts spin up there with the landfall of a hurricane. Here's the radar the last few hours. You can see it's a wet night there in Florida as Elsa continues its motion. It should come in, it looks like, Somewhere up here, you got Cross City. This is a the the least populated area along the west coast is kind of up here or down by uh, north of the Keys. 
So it looks like it's headed in the general vicinity of north of Tampa, but again, that would put Tampa on the right side, and this is a lopsided system. Thankfully, it's nothing like a major hurricane, a Category 3 or 4 or 5, and we'd be dealing with uh, a devastating storm surge. Nevertheless, those water rises along the coast could be a problem, to say nothing of the heavy rainfall and the gusty winds, as mentioned before. Uh, the key messages for Hurricane Elsa as of 11 p.m. Number one, heavy rain for Cuba tonight, significant flooding and mudslides. As Elsa moves across western and northern Florida through Wednesday, heavy rainfall may result in considerable flash urban and minor flooding uh, and uh, minor to isolated moderate river flooding. Now, mid to late week, that rain's going to move, as I mentioned, across southern uh, southeast Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, southeast Virginia, and that may result in isolated flash and urban flooding with uh, that possible across Georgia and the low country of South Carolina. So all the bottom line is flooding rains possible all in that area of the southeastern U.S. and the Florida Peninsula. Number two, there is a danger of life-threatening storm surge along the west coast of Florida. In fact, let me show you. This is as of 11 p.m. You can see the water rises one to three feet south of Bonita Beach to Flamingo, but three to five feet up here in the Big Bend in Tampa Bay, and two to four feet further south. So again, that doesn't sound like a lot, but in low-lying areas with the winds, the waves, the rain, uh, you get a water rise of five feet. That's almost as tall as a person. And water, that can be scary. Flooding's scary. Remember, water kills. You could hide from the wind, but you can't hide from the water. Uh, back to the messages now. Uh, that's going to continue along uh, portions of the west coast of Florida tonight and Wednesday. We have that storm surge warning in effect for that area. Number three, hurricane conditions are expected tonight and early Wednesday along a very narrow portion of the Florida coast on the west coast, and we have that hurricane warning in effect. Tropical storm conditions are already occurring across areas of southwest Florida, and that's going to continue to pull northward into the west coast of the state in the warning area throughout tomorrow morning. So again, this is going to be an overnight thing uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. And number four, although the center of Elsa is expected to remain inland, tropical storm conditions are expected because it's expected to remain a tropical storm pretty much throughout this entire track through the Carolinas. Looking at the power outages right now, Florida, you guys, Florida, you guys hold up pretty well. I got, I'm always impressed with Florida. Uh, Florida, right now, it looks like uh, you guys got some power outages, but not like you would think. There's some in Sarasota and Manatee, obviously. Pinellas County, uh, you guys got some. We will likely see an increase in power outages if the winds get strong enough and they knock over trees and power lines and, you know, with any landfalling hurricane. So we're going to watch this map. But as of right now, not too bad, it doesn't look like. On uh, the final analysis, there's Hurricane Elsa sitting off the west coast of Florida. Again, an early season hurricane, a July hurricane, went through the Windward Islands a few days ago, uh, remained a tropical storm as it drenched Haiti, buffeted Jamaica, moved over Cuba with flooding rains, and now it's moved out, become a hurricane, and we're going to continue to watch it here throughout the night as this system moves closer and closer to the west coast of Florida. I'm Mike Nason with the latest tropical update. Stay tuned for further information on Hurricane Elsa.